Hello everybody, it's Ashley Rianne and I'm here today for a glute workout. So I'm going to be doing a new series focusing on some areas that belly dancers often have some difficulties with. So we're going to focus on strengthening and lengthening. And so we're going to start today on our backs. So let's just come and lie down on our mats. Just get nice and comfortable. And we're just gonna start by drawing the knees into the chest. Just rock side to side, just release any tension from the back if you're doing this in the morning. It's a good way to wake up the spine, just working on a little bit of mobility. And let's just extend those legs. Let's just work the ankles. You can do some circles in opposite directions. You can flex your feet, you can point your toes, just waking up the entire leg line. And when you're ready, let's pop your feet on the mat. We're going to have them sit bone distance apart, and we're going to start in a nice neutral spine, just doing some pelvic rocks, just to wake up the pelvis. So just really ground down through that tailbone, making sure that your hip bone, pubic bone is level, that your ribs are knitting together. You got a heavy chest. And when you're ready, let's just lengthen that tailbone. So we're gonna slightly depress the backbone into the mat, and then we're gonna tip the pelvis forward. So we're coming into a little bit of an arch in that pelvis. And we're just gonna rock forward and back, just working on that very gentle depression of the back into the mat. And then that little reciprocal arch, just creating space in that back. And again, relieving any tension. And let's just rock it out side to side and let's just get nice and settled. Let's knit those ribs together and feel those back ribs on the mat. When you're ready, let's keep rolling that pelvis and coming into our half bridge here, focusing on stability, just waking up the posterior chain. Take a nice deep breath in here. And on your exhale, we're gonna lengthen the spine one vertebra at a time to the very bottom. Inhale to tuck through that pelvis. And when you're ready to exhale, coming back into that half bridge here, focusing on that stability. Inhale to stay. And on your exhale, we're gonna start with the chest, roll each vertebra down at a time, trying to lengthen that spine, make it nice and long, focusing on those lower glutes into that little half bridge here. We're gonna do this one more time. And when you're ready, rolling all the way down on that exhale. We're gonna prepare to come into our full bridge here. So inhale to prepare, and on your exhale, coming into that nice spinal roll up, this time focusing on opening the hip flexors here. Hip flexors often get quite tight in dancers, so it's really great for us to tap into our hamstrings and glutes and thinking about spreading those hip flexors nice and long facing the ceiling. And when you're ready, you can just roll down. And we're gonna do a few more here. So now that we're posterior chain is a little bit warmer, think about kind of creating that one long line from our sternum all the way to our pubic bone. We're making a nice diagonal line. Making sure that we've got that tucked chin. And when we lower down, we're trying to lay each vertebra down at a time, almost like a strand of pearls, trying to extend the spine, making it longer each and every time we lay down. Keep those ribs knitted together. Keep those hips nice and level. And we're gonna come into some footwork here. So we're gonna spread all 10 toes and let's lift up that right heel and press it down. So we wanna focus on peeling each part of that foot onto the ball of the foot and then we're reciprocating that peel to press it back down. This is a really great place to work those hamstrings and lower glutes. So really focus on pressing the ball of that foot into the floor and when that heel comes back down on that floor, there's a firm connection with the heel bone and that floor. Making sure we're breathing. And we're going to lift both heels up and down. This can sometimes cause hamstrings to cramp. So if you're feeling any discomfort or any cramping, just walk your feet a little bit further away from you just to open up that line. Keep connected to all 10 toes as we lift those heels up and press them down. And we're gonna do one more and we're gonna come into our prancing. So we're gonna do opposite feet. So one heel is gonna lift while the opposite foot's gonna press down. So it's a little bit more dynamic. Again, focusing on moving through the ball of that foot, lifting up through the arch. And a little bit faster, one, two, and one. 
two. One, two, and one, two. And press it down. Take a nice full deep breath in here, and when you're ready, soften at the sternum and lay each vertebra down at a time, coming back through that imprint into neutral. Let's bring your knees into chest to release the back. Just rock side to side. You can move your head if you've got any tension. And let's bring our feet back to the floor. And when you're ready, we're gonna come back into that articulated bridge and we're gonna hold it here for marching. So we're gonna gently press into the palms as we use our lower abdominals to bring that left leg into tabletop. And we place that left foot down, keeping those hips level, those ribs are knitted together. Let's bring that right leg up and roll that right foot back down. We wanna really focus here on scooping through the abdominals to help pull that knee in towards the chest in that tabletop position and placing it gently on the floor, focusing on that nice roll down through that foot. We wanna really work that diagonal line all the way from the sternum to the knees, keeping the hip bones facing the ceiling, really firing up through the back posterior chain. And when you're ready, let's take that nice deep breath in, exhale, roll all the way down through that imprint and spine back into neutral and let's roll it out. Good work, that's definitely a booty burner. There's a lot going on there. We're gonna come into our hinge bridging. So we wanna move the hips and the trunk in one long line. So when you're ready, we're gonna exhale to press up, inhale to fold right at those hips to hover about an inch or so off of the mat and then again firing through the back body to press those hips up to the ceiling. Focusing on really opening up through those hip flexors to get a little bit of length and a little bit of stretch in here. Keep those ribs knitted together to help activate the upper abdominals. And we're going to come into our little half range pulses. So we're gonna come down just about an inch or two and then fire up to press all the way up to the ceiling, focusing on up and up. We're hinging at those hips, pressing up, keeping those palms connected and let's come all the way down. We're gonna come into our Pilates triangle with our feet, the heels together, toes are gonna be opening to the corner and the knees are gonna follow the line of the toes. When you're ready, we're gonna take a nice deep breath in and exhale just to press those hips up to the ceiling. Inhale to hinge the hips to hover and again, pressing up. We're gonna be really working, again, the posterior line here, but we're also gonna get some inner thigh engagement. So try to keep those knees nice and steady, really focusing on pressing through both feet, keeping those heels locked together. Hip bones are facing the ceiling. And we're gonna come in to our little pulses here. So we're gonna come down about two inches and pressing up. Again, this can be quite an intense exercise, so please just modify as you need to. If you need to have a little break, And let's hold up. We're just gonna work on opening the knees to the side and then pulling them back in towards each other. So here we're gonna be engaging those external rotators of the hips and again, really working on those inner thighs. We're keeping our feet nice and steady on the ground and just focusing on that little butterfly motion of those legs opening and closing, trying to open right from those hips, squeeze those legs in towards each other, keep those ribs locked together breathing and tiny little flutters here and open and open and open and open and let's come all the way down that's going to definitely need a good stretch so you can open those knees nice and wide coming towards those armpits bring them together just roll it out lovely good job we're gonna work on some hip twists. So when you're ready, you can have your feet close together and we're just gonna press our hips up in our hip hinge. We're gonna really put our weight into our left leg, twist the hips towards the right, drop the right hip to hover just above the floor. Then we're gonna fire through that right leg and then bring both hips to face the center before twisting over towards the left. So we always want to picture that nice twist right coming from the bottom of the armpit all the way to the hips 
and we're gonna weight the opposite leg. So the leg that's gonna be having the hip twisting towards the floor doesn't have a lot of weight on it until it starts to press up. This one just takes a little bit of practice, but it feels really great and it's an awesome way to isolate the sides of the glutes. Also again, working on some stability and some mobility. If you have a fitness ball or if you have a pillow, you can also progress this exercise by putting it between your knees and just adding a little bit of deeper pelvic floor work. You can also place a fitness circle on the outside of those legs and use that in this exercise as another little option for a progression. And let's bring both hips up to the ceiling. We're gonna finish with some little short rain pulses again, just to really burn out those glutes. Here we go. So again, hinging at those hips, firing through the feet, firing through those glutes, opening those hip flexors, keeping those ribs knitted together. And let's come all the way down. Fantastic. Let's just get everything Relax, so let's just move side to side. You can do some little circles just to release any tension in that back. Good work, that was a lot of work for those glutes. And let's come and transition on to all fours. And here we are. Let's spread those fingers nice and wide. Keep those wrists underneath the shoulders. Let's pull the belly button in away from our t-shirt. The knees are underneath the hips. We're gonna draw that knee in towards the chest using those lower abdominals. And then we're gonna fire through the back body to stamp that heel onto the ceiling. So we're gonna really try to work the stability on that supporting leg while moving that pivot leg. So we're lurping those abdominals in and then pressing through that back body to really get that foot right above the head. Try not to sink over onto that supporting leg. Keep everything nice and square. You're using your obliques here, using your lower abdominals. Those ribs are knitting together and we're keeping nice and steady in the sternum and the chest. Here we go, little pulses here, a little half range. If you have a mirror that you can use as a guide, you want to make sure that you can see that foot coming right over your head. And let's lengthen that leg nice and long. We're going to draw that hip bone towards the face of the floor. And we're going to isolate from the tops of those hamstrings and those glutes, keeping that long line and that extended ankle. And we're just going to lift it up. Keep a little micro bend in those arms just so that we don't hang out in those joints. And our neck is nice and long. Think about that energy coming through the top of your head and out of those toes. And we're just contracting up and touching it down. And let's come into some short range little pulses here. So coming down just a few inches and firing up to press it up. Keep drawing that belly button in. And let's, let's return. We're gonna externally rotate the foot this time again, trying to keep those hip bones facing the front as much as possible and we're going to be working into that corner line of that mat so keep that nice twist happening from the tops of those hips all the way to those toes to the floor this one's going to be a little bit more challenging and i want you to focus on that cross body lines so that opposite armpit just that you keep everything nice and steady but we're also feeling that beautiful little cross body connection and here we are, coming into our little pulses. This one you might tire out a little bit quicker, but that's okay. Good, and coming in. Let's have a nice shell stretch here. Let's tuck through that pelvis, rounds the back, and let's roll all the way back up. And let's extend that leg. We're gonna come into hot potato, so let's drop both hip bones to face the floor. We're gonna bring that leg in line with the hip, and we're gonna lift it up and over, across that supporting leg, and back to the other side. So here, trying to keep those hips nice and steady, working right from that hip joint, the energy coming out of those toes as we lift up and over, creating a bit of a rainbow here. And let's bring it in. Oh, let's cross that leg in front of the other. We're going to come into a nice little flat cross legs position and let's just lean our body forward and just move side to side. Really stretch out that glute. Breathing and when you're ready, 
we're gonna switch to the opposite side. So we'll re repeat absolutely everything. So just making sure that everything is in alignment and you've got lots of stability in that chest. Belly button is away from that t-shirt. Wrists are underneath the shoulders. And when you're ready, let's go. Let's pull that knee in and let's press that foot up towards the ceiling. I want you to imagine having maybe two martinis on your hip bones so that you don't want to tip those martinis and spill them. Or you could have margaritas, whatever you like. But we want to focus on keeping both hip bones facing the floor and we're just really isolating from that hip joint. And let's hold it here and coming into our short range pulses. This is a great place if you also have a little toning ball or even one of those Pilates balls. You can do all of these exercises with that ball just kind of nestled between your leg and your knee. Beautiful, let's come into our extended leg. Let's draw both hip bones to face the floor and let's lift that leg up. Just solely focusing on that glute line and the hamstrings. Again, those martinis, those margaritas are on both hips, so trying to keep those hips nice and steady. There's that micro bend in your elbows, and both arms should have the inside arms facing each other, so we're not pressing those arms forward. They're drawing in almost like a screw into the shoulders. And let's do our short range pulses here, trying to keep that length, get longer every single time that you lift up and press down. And coming down, we're gonna externally rotate, bring that foot to the corner of that mat. Shake out those wrists, there's a lot of tension that can accumulate here. And when you're ready, lifting up and pressing down. And let's hold that leg up for those little tiny pulses. Keep that nice external rotation happening in that hip, energy coming out of those toes. And let's come in, let's do a nice quick little shell stretch, just to release that back. You can rotate those palms to face the ceiling just to get rid of any tension, and just to change the arm position. Lovely, let's roll up, come back into our four point position. We're gonna come into our hot potato, so let's extend that leg, drop both hips towards the floor, lift that leg up, and when you're ready, you're gonna cross it up and over to the opposite side. So focusing on creating that nice little rainbow, and you might find that one side is a little bit more mobile, a little bit stronger, or has a bit more stamina than the other. That's totally okay, that's totally normal. We just know that we have to work a little harder on our weaker side to try to get it up to speed with the other one. And let's come into that nice shell stretch. Stretching out the back, reach those arms forward. Get a nice stretch. And we're gonna just come into our flat cross-legged sitting and lean forward, get a nice stretch through that torso. You can shift your weight side to side to target those different spots of those glutes. Take a nice full deep breath in here and let's exhale. Lovely work. We're gonna come into a kneeling position. So you can either keep your feet flat or you can tuck your toes under. And if you have a Pilates ball, you can place it between your knees. We're gonna interlace our fingers and just place it right at where our skull meets our neck. Keep everything a nice long line. Those hip bones are really facing the front. We're pressing into those hip flexors. We're gonna inhale, we're gonna bend at the hip, send the weight towards those heels. And then on the exhale, fire through those glutes, hamstrings, and we're gonna press those hips nice and open to the front. So we're doing a nice kneeling squat here. This is a beautiful exercise to really isolate and target the glutes, the hamstrings, the inner thighs, the pelvic floor, and also really great for those women who are postpartum. It really targets the pelvic floor here in a really nice, safe way. We want to make sure to knit those ribs together to stimulate that upper abdominal connection and we want to focus on keeping a nice neutral spine but we're still opening through those hips as we press forward. 
All right, let's do some quad work. Let's open those arms to face the front. It looks like they're lying on a table and we're gonna hinge back from the point of those knees the energy coming out the top of the head. You might find the first two or three are a little bit rocky and then you'll find as those muscles get used to lengthening, you're gonna be able to go back a little bit further. This is one really popular exercise that a lot of dancers use for getting strength and stability for floor work. And so we also do this in Pilates. It's an awesome exercise for those quads and also for the core muscles trying to move the body in a plank position. Everything is just hinging right from those knees and coming all the way up. Let's come into a little combo. So we're gonna inhale to squat it back, fire through those glutes, coming up to stack, and we're going to lean our weight back, working on those quads, beautiful. So inhale to squat, exhale to fire up, press it up. Inhale, arms in front. We're gonna hinge back on those knees. And exhale, coming forward. We've got five repetitions of this, so just moving at your own time. Again, modifying or resting as you need. This is your practice and you know your body best. And let's just go one final time. Let's squat it back, exhale to stack nice and tall, arms in front, knit those ribs as we hinge back, coming up. And let's release. Let's get into a nice number four stretch to get a really deep stretch through those hips, through those glutes. So just taking as much time as you need to here. You can also do this stretch in sitting if you wanna sit up on a chair or if you're sitting on a couch. And you can of course also do it in standing, making sure that you've got something that you can use in your hands for balance. Good, and let's switch sides. Sometimes I like to shift my weight side to side to just target different parts of my glutes. So whatever you think is best for you, please feel free to do that here. I really hope that you enjoyed today's workout. It's been really fun to start to get my head around some of these different exercises and strengthening work that we can do as dancers to really promote the longevity of our dance and also to make us stronger and better dancers so that we're not limited by any muscle weakness or dysfunction. Every time you practice is a new opportunity for improvement and for growth. So I thank you so much for being able to be here with me today. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Have a great day, everybody.